Welcome to IJDM. This is going to be kind of a chill out episode. I've been working a lot on the MEGA project and oh, I've been doing so many laptops. I just want to take a moment and one of my original tents of doing these videos is taking a look back at some older DOS software, uh, particularly business type software and things like that. Most people look don't really look into the business type things. Um, I do have a like a DOS version of MS Works or MS Word. I'm not sure what it was called back then. And a few other nifty difty programs. I was going to go right into this one on a certain piece of software, but I just want to hit on this one real quick, which is still very usable. And one I learned way back when, and that would be ProWrite. This actually was a nice program in the fact that it was very clean and that can be argued but as far as i'm concerned it was a very clean program it didn't give you a huge amount of options but you could do certain things and of course you were limited to with what the printers could do at the day of the time i should say i'm just going to set up first you can select your printers in here your data directory your work drive your screen colors so if you want to change it to you know most people may recognize this program in this color which is usually the default and then there is this one and um and then of course you have your monochrome so if you went to school back probably in the late 80s or early 90s you probably worked on this program uh easy enough one two e you know can't really get confused there and you're ready to type and you have your simple functions up there and so we are typing yeah there we go okay easy enough and then you can save your working um, file to whatever directory you want and if you want to encrypt the file I think you could actually put a password on it which was interesting back in the day um, from there you could delete files you could insert files print working copy preview I guess yeah okay well I, I'm not really sure how that helps me at all but okay uh, erase working copy and then there were some macro functions I'm not going to get into that or anything uh, there you could obviously do a boldface word how would you do that mm -hmm. oh yeah okay so each word is changing color it's going a little bit it's going from like a gray to a white it's hard to see probably with the camera but yeah so you could format and do bold and you could do underlining and stuff uh, I wonder if it will actually show the underline Underline word. Okay, so underline appears in green. It's a little confusing there, but you were limited with what DOS could and couldn't do and, and what you saw on the screen in front of you. I'm sure there was other programs that are probably far better. Uh, most people probably remember, uh, what was that program called? Uh, there was early versions of Word, but I think ProWrite wasn't the big one. I think there was one other one, and for some reason, I cannot think of the name of it. You can put it down in the comments anyways. If I think about it, I'll, I'll throw it in there. Um, because I know it was a popular one as well. I think this was kind of the cheaper of all of them, but I mean, it did everything you needed to do. You could justify, center stuff. Um, you could check spelling, spellings of words, find synonyms. I mean, it, it was it was well off. I don't know if, the, and it had an address book you could build. So it was a nifty, 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 well, it was a nifty program anyways. And we'll get out of this and we're not gonna bother saving that. Nah, we don't wanna save it. At least it warned you. I mean, programs back in the day they just didn't warn you uh one i want to go into and i kind of covered mpx on on the music on floppy uh episode i covered but what i want to go into here is pos software and in dos yeah that was a thing and uh when i i finally remember is a guy and it was called dhpos uh, i think his name was dale harris had made this program and did different things to it over the over time, but uh, mostly in the 90, late 90s, early 2000s, I actually made a few POS terminals using, you know, I charged for the terminals, not the program, because the program was is totally free and did some amazing stuff if you just needed a simple POS. So point lesson learned there is, I know you could probably get a much more modern system, but I found this was, it was fairly simple enough where that you're dealing with it and it's in DOS, so you don't really have to worry about people messing around with stuff if you have employees or whatever. They were pretty much limited to what they could and couldn't do. Or with Windows, sometimes there was loopholes where you could do the all enter thing and shrink the window, and then they could go in and play games if the games hadn't been removed or add stuff onto it. So, you know, that was that. And the screen just starts up, and 
pen, employee pen. Uh, I guess I must have set this up at one time. And that's not the employee pen. Well, obviously it is a some kind of. Hmm. I'm gonna just see if I can do a slight restart here. I obviously the file I got this from, I must have set it up for somebody at some point, and I don't know what the actual thingamajig is. So I'm gonna go into. Oh, that's kind of big. Okay, let's start. Okay, yeah. Here's a data file, then tab to insert a new one. So we'll call this uh, just simply IJDM. And the access code we'll give it is IJDM. Doesn't need a register name. <clears throat> no point on that. And tab one finished. <clears throat> okay, so we got a bunch of setup options here. We can do category list, so we'll just call this one default. Simple enough, and this is where you list your different goods, if you had foods or maybe supplies or whatever, tools, so forth. So yeah, that's in there. Okay, checks, uh, yeah, we we'll require all that for checks. Close register, um, may require, so we'll just pass forward. Okay, good enough. Color black and white, so you can, yeah, you can do color or black and white. We'll stick with color. Uh, currencies, yeah, okay, well, currency name, we'll just default currency, we'll just call it uh, dollars. And customer info, yeah, we're gonna take, you can actually have, keep customer logs, as, you know, if you have VIP customers, or whatever, or discount things, I think there's a way to set that up too, but I'm not gonna do that for this situation, it'll take too long. Uh, date format, whatever, uh, discount, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I don't think you really need to do that either. Employee setup, so you could have employees or just have it as straight register, so. Uh, do you wanna, yeah, let's use that. Hit tab, yes, yes, let's have pins. Do you wanna track tips? Nah, I guess if you use that in a restaurant type environment or a pizza shop or something. Employee list, I don't know what the heck that means, and then edit employee list, so. I'll just put an IJDM. And then, well, I guess you don't set your pin num a number up on this. Well, edit playlist, playlist password. Well, I guess you should have a password on that. You don't want your employees changing other employees' passwords. Key, cre uh, key press beep. Okay, well, yeah, let's see. Oh, my birds will love that. Lock register code. Yeah, we'll just do password again. Oh, God, that's going to get annoying. <laughs> uh, passwords and names. Here we go. Okay, well, mm hmm. What is that? Oh, it's password. Yeah, I swear, that's what we entered. Can we enter in password? Password. No? Hmm. I'm going to program that. We're going to see head and footer. We're not going to print receipts because I don't have a printer. And we need some stock in here. So I think we just skip down to this and just, uh, sure, yeah, sure. You can do that. Uh, do you wish to use a stock table? Yeah, sure. Uh, change the thing without using a password. No, you should be able to have to have a password. I'd imagine you don't want people just whatever. And then stock table. Hopefully there's no password. Oh, this is cool. Oh, countdown timer. Oh, it's not going to blow up. So the first item, we'll just call it Amiga. Uh, oh no, it wants a code. Okay, so we'll just go, uh, uh, I guess we'll go one, two, three, four. And we'll call this Amiga uh, 4,000. Price, uh, $5,000. Okay, uh, number sold, value inventory, I guess inventory. Oh, go back. Uh, okay. Did that work? I haven't used this in a very long time, so forgive me if this is taking uh, too long. Okay, we have that. So let's just do another one. We'll call this one. That was one, two, three, four. Let's call this five, six, seven, eight. And we'll call this. Uh, we'll call this a keyboard. Oh, just hit the keyboard. The camera and keyboard. Hundred dollars. Mm, tax and yeah, no, no tax. Number sold. Value sold. It skips right over inventory, so I don't know if it'll matter there. So let's see if we can get into our register now and uh, uh, yeah. goodbye.
No, maybe not yet. So I'm gonna go POS and press a key. Okay, so we can choose. So this is the one we set up. Okay, so there we go. There's our main menu. We can get into this one. Uh, you make a purchase, return exchange, file maintenance. It's probably something like what I was just in, stock table, so forth. No sales, I think if somebody wants, like, give you a dollar and you give them four quarters, something like that. Or if they want 2,000 nickels, you can give them 2,000 nickels. Uh, void a sale, lock register. So I guess if you lock the register, hopefully this works. Uh, okay. Uh, close register, associates. Uh, okay, it does not. Hmm. Okay. This is probably my third restart because this was programmed in the past. I should have just down re downloaded the file and did it all from scratch. Every time I put a password, it would do something wonky. So it might be something with the master file or whatever when I set this up for a client way back in the day. So we'll just go in and I already went through the different functions. So let's just do a purchase and stock table. So. If we had a number on it, we'd enter that in, and then yeah, the price is five thousand dollars. That's right, one, and yeah, that's, that's the right description. And then there it's in. So, total, well, you need a keyboard with that, and that was five, six, seven, eight, and that was five dollars. So, we'll give them five dollars, and it's in there. But let's just say this customer, well, you wanted to give them the, the I thought if we put that in as fifty dollars, wait a minute. That's not right. <laughs> well, that's okay for this purpose, but, uh, and then plus to do the total, I guess that's when you cash out. So for now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna give a little discount. I'm gonna do, uh, uh, just line two only. And we're gonna give the keyboard, we're gonna get that keyboard for free. Cause we're nice like that. So everything's in and yeah, I got my thing rung up and then it says hit plus. So hit the plush. Plush? I guess you can call it the plush key. I'm gonna call it the plus key. All right, pay by, well, we're gonna do cash. We're gonna take no checks. Who uses checks anymore? Yeah, I know, so you still have to use them for a few things, but do cash and hand them out. Well, let's just say they're gonna give us a, let's say they're gonna give us a $10,000 bill. Let's see what happens. And just for fun. I don't know if that exists or anything. There was a, okay, so, not programmed, so it's not gonna print the receipt, so the transaction's finished. But if you had a receipt printer or another line printer, it would obviously print out a receipt. And I have no way of showing you that in the current situation, but um, I'm sure there's a way you could rig one up with even a modern day computer or something that maybe is some kind of converter out there or whatever, but that would be the only problem with this. But I think back in the day, what I usually used was serial or par like parallel printers. And I think there is still some receipt printers out there that may be made to use that technology. Others, they yeah, they upgrade and change it to different, more Windows-based stuff. But this is pretty clean. I mean, this is easy to use. It doesn't even, I mean, it looks legitimate. And it's got a ton of options to add associates or whatever. Of course, it's not gonna let me in there. So I didn't, when I did this a third time, I didn't put any passwords in or anything. So today when I close your register up and it's like, okay, well, how we do today? Well, we made $5,000. I didn't set this up in a way that like what our cost was and anything. So it would tell you like if you paid 4,000 for us, so that we you know, made a thousand dollar profit or maybe we didn't, maybe we only made 995 cause we gave away a $5 keyboard. Who knows? That should have been $50. But that is a POS program from the DOS days. There is far more sophisticated ones out there. I want to show this one because it's free. It's still readily available. You can just look up Dale Harris POS or DH POS, and it is a free file. And it's fun to play around with. And it, it might be a good training tool. Who knows? And, you know, just something you can do. And, I mean, maybe use it for a garage sale thing. If you got an old laptop, I mean, it'll. I think this will run straight up through Windows XP. So something to use that old laptop for if you just got a, you know, you do weekend garage sales or flea markets or whatever. It's always an idea. Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe this is all totally useless. There you have it.